Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ira Pernick. I'm the principal of Schreiber High School, and I want to welcome you to our first ever virtual incoming um, ninth grade orientation. This is on the list of things I never really imagined that I'd be doing. I'm just adding to it tonight, as we all are, by creating this event that we normally do in our school in a number of, of rooms. We wanna provide you with information tonight um, that we think will help you. I wanna be honest with you, we are going to give you way too much information for you to remember. Um, don't make that a goal for yourself. Uh, we wanna give you an overview of what our school is like, what programs exist for your children, not just for next year, but in some cases over the next four years. Um, and, but we don't expect you to remember it all. I guess the idea here is to illustrate for you that Schreiber is a school of great depth and breadth when it comes to opportunities for students, all sorts of students um, with all sorts of interests. And I can tell you if we were together, and this is really challenging because I'm confident that you can see and hear me, but I can't see you. Um, but I will tell you if we were face to face in person that I get really excited about nights like tonight. Um, as you sit as um, nervous, perhaps, that your children are about to start high school, I get filled with excitement because I know that I, that I believe this, that in the course of the next four years, your children are going to meet people who are going to change their lives forever. And, and because I know that, and because some of those people are on this panel today, um, it fills me with excitement. I get the chills when I say it in the auditorium and I have the chills right now. Um, just so you know a little bit about me, I am, uh, this is my 10th year as principal of Schreiber, my 20th year as a high school principal overall. So I've done a lot of these meetings and I wanna set up a few ground rules so we know how this is gonna work. In a few minutes, I will uh, start to share my screen for our slideshow. There are about 65 slides. Remember, I told you, too much information. Don't try to remember it all. That's why we're recording. And so it, when this is all said and done, we'll post this on our YouTube and you can listen to me again uh, and then feel bad for my children, I guess. Um, in addition to that, uh, we'll post the slideshow on our website, more about that later. On the bottom of your screen, there is an option for Q&A. We are not gonna use the chat function tonight. We are gonna use the Q&A function. So if you have a question uh, that comes up at any time throughout the evening, please go right ahead and put your question in the Q&A. The Q&A questions are not public until they get answered. So uh, please be patient. Um, but I also don't want you to think that every single question has to be answered tonight. Tonight, we officially kind of begin our relationship. Um, and I will tell you now that if at any point between today and the start of high school uh, in September of 2021, you have a question, even after that, um, email me. You'll have access to my email. You probably already know how to find it. You can call my office. Uh, you'll meet plenty of people that you can do the same with. And my goal is to make it so that you can be as comfortable as possible when the first day of school rolls around. So uh, with that, let me um, share my screen. This is a whole nother challenge, right? All outside my comfort zone. So let's see how this works. Wait, somehow. This was supposed to be at the start. Patience is really part of this whole game. Okay, all right. So after we're done and sometime tomorrow, we'll post this presentation on our website under Mr. Weiss's 
um, page on our website, you'll meet Mr. Weiss momentarily. He will be the assistant principal for your class. Um, there'll be a more detailed orientation in June. I know it's, you'll see at the end of this presentation, it says June 21st. We'll maintain some flexibility with the date, especially if we're doing it in this model again. That will be a more intimate setting, more intimate in that it'll just be me and Mr. Weiss and there'll be a lot more nuts and bolts information for you about the rules of the school uh, and the way the school operates. Um, but for now, again, we'll do an overview. So tonight you're gonna hear from a whole bunch of people, myself, I'm gonna introduce the HSA co-presidents momentarily, Irene Sinkinegi and Rachel Garmisa. Then you'll meet Mr. Weiss and then we'll start the presentations. So why don't I go ahead and quickly turn it over to Irene and Rachel um, co-presidents of the HSA. Hi, good evening. My name is Irene Sinkanegi. I am one of the co-presidents of the HSA. Um, I was trying to figure out earlier today how long we've been at, um, at Triber, and this is actually our 10th consecutive year, our last year. So I've been here as long as Dr. Pernick. Uh, the HSA um, is uh, an important part of your experience. We um, do quite a bit for the school, work with Dr. Pernick uh, and the other uh, administrators. We are um, involved and really try to be as much of a liaison between the parents, the students, and the administration. And I'm going to pass it over to Rachel, um, who has my name on her little square. Uh, so Rachel, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please go ahead. Thank you. Can you see me? Hi, I'm, I'm Rachel Garmissa, not Irene Sikinegi. Um, welcome, um, and I think Irene covered it all. We look forward to meeting all of you in person, hopefully sooner than later. And um, thank you. Thanks, Irene, and thanks, Rachel. And I just um, wanna add that uh, please consider joining the HSA. Uh, we don't really do any fundraisers. Um, so your $25 membership covers a lot of things that includes a scholarship, um, various club stipends, uh, various programs that are put throughout the year. So um, please go ahead and join and also consider volunteering. We have a lot of different opportunities for you to be really an integral part of um, your children experience. Everything from um, uh, substance abuse um, to outreach. Um, uh, so yes, we do a lot for the school. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. And just a word of encouragement for all of you parents to consider joining the HSA, the relationship and the problem solving that the HSA uh, maintains with the school is critical to how well we function. I think you'll find over the course of time that there are questions and sometimes, at least this has been my experience, um, the wisdom that other parents who have gone through the school uh, with other children, the wisdom that they bring to questions is um, often the best source of answers. And so make those connections, keep the HSA as part of your contact list. Um, they, the co-presidents, they contact me all hours of the day and night when there is a problem to solve and you'll get answers really fast. And that's one of the things that we really aim to do. So please consider that. All right, next. Let me introduce to you Craig Weiss. Mr. Weiss will be the assistant principal for the class of 2025. Mr. Weiss. Hello, thank you, Dr. Pernick, and welcome. Um, as he said, my name is uh, Craig Weiss. I'll be the assistant principal for the class of 2025. Um, just like Dr. Pernick, this night is one of the most exciting evenings for me. Um, I love uh, getting to know new families. And so this is, again, as Dr. Pernick said, a little different for us. Um, but I have been at Schreiber. This will be my 16th year. Um, I will be graduating my fourth graduating class this spring. And so the class of 2025 will be my fifth class at Schreiber. So I've been at this for a while. Um, the way to think of the assistant principals at Schreiber is to think of us um, that I will be your first point of contact 
But for some of you, that may not be the case. For some of you, we may never speak over four years, and that's fine. And for others of you, we may speak regularly, and that's fine too. What is really wonderful about the Schreiber system is that uh, because the assistant principals follow with the students for four years, we do get to know the students. And so if you call me, if you call my office, first you will meet the most wonderful person you will ever meet in the world outside of my wife, of course. Uh, and that would be my secretary, Miss Bonnie Lane. Um, she was voted at one point, one of the top 10 things, top 10 greatest things about Schreiber High School. Um, we have the list posted in our office. And so it is a wonderful, warm experience to be part of our class. Um, she is the mom, grandmother, aunt, sister, best friend to every member of our class. Um, when someone may rip an article of clothing, she's there with a needle and thread. Um, if somebody's not feeling well, she'll guide them to the appropriate services, whether that's a nurse's office or a psychologist, or she will help out in every possible way. Um, the other people I want to talk about um, a little bit are, are the guidance counselors. So that is the other person that might be your central point of contact. They will play a larger role in your child's life in high school than perhaps they've played in the past. And so uh, getting to know your child's guidance counselor is essential in high school. Um, they guide you through the course selection process. They guide you through the social and emotional needs uh, that your child may have as they progress through high school. They will help you with the college or after high school process when you get to that point. And so the better they know you and the better they know your child, the better that relationship can be and the more uh, success you can have. Um, there was a question that was asked about when the children will meet with their guidance counselor. And so guidance counselors are assigned over the summer. Um, and so your child will have an opportunity to meet with their guidance counselor at the beginning of the next school year. Um, so my office handles all of the things on this list and more, um, attendance, discipline, uh, assigning lockers, um, if your child has academic issues, social issues, interested in clubs, activities, anything that you might have a question about um, and you don't know where to call, um, we, you know, we hopefully will have an answer for you. And if we don't have the answer, we will direct you um, to where you need to get that answer. Um, I am really, really excited to get to meet your children and to get to meet you in person when we uh, resume, uh, when we can be back in school. Um, really excited for that. Um, and I really thank you for this opportunity. Um, this is really, really wonderful. So back to you, Dr. Pernick. Thanks very much, Mr. Weiss. Um, just a quick word about um, well, a couple of words. One is how important relationships are, especially the relationships that develop between students, families, and their assistant principal, and to echo the relationship that um, should exist between students, families, and guidance counselors. Um, you know, Schreiber is built in such a way where your guidance counselor will follow you for four years like the assistant principal follow your child. It's built like that on purpose and it's designed to develop those relationships to make them meaningful. I will tell you the same thing about me that I'll tell you about Mr. Weiss. Your child having a relationship with us is not a bad thing. That's not something to be feared. That is absolutely the opposite. Um, there are gonna be times where there are difficult conversations to have. They're just conversations. They're a point in time. They're not a sentence forever. It's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity for us to have discussion. We like those opportunities and uh, we want to be supportive throughout all of it. I also want to say that you're going to get a lot of information. So we're about to start. We're going to roll into all this information. The transition from middle school to high school is a really special time. And the time for high school, that growth period, uh, from ninth grade to 12th grade is remarkable. I want to encourage all of you, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. Um, allow and enjoy this time. I've worked with many parents over the years that are looking at the finish line and the finish line is a college acceptance. And I want to just encourage everybody to look at the first finish line, which is the end of eighth grade and a new race to run the beginning of ninth grade and just focus there. 
as a special time to help your children navigate uh, and be prepared for high school. There's a lot more to being prepared to, for being prepared to high school than academics. Uh, we'll talk more about that in June, but those are some of the things, the other than academic things that many of your children might be concerned about. So we want you to be having those conversations um, up front and stay focused and present um, on, on grade nine. So uh, we did the HSA, elective area presentation. Uh, so our first presenter is uh, Kevin Scully, Mr. Kevin Scully, who is the Director of Creative Arts. And he is here to talk to you about our art and music programs. Mr. Scully. Thank you, Dr. Pernick. So normally I would be talking um, about the concerts that we've had in the, in the uh, fall and the winter and the art exhibits. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to have these this year, but I know that we will soon. Uh, sooner rather than later. So I'm really excited about, about that happening in the high school. We're really proud of our art and music programs at the high school. And um, I think that any of you who've experienced those programs will agree. Um, so I'm gonna go through some of the art and then some of the music foundation courses and just the general outline. And I'll kind of breeze through all these bullet points uh, quickly, but of course you can always contact me with any questions you have. So the high school art electives begin with one required foundations course. And the foundations in ninth grade include foundations of studio art, drawing and di design for production, which is also known as DDP, and creative crafts. Uh, students can also substitute clothing and textiles plus uh, housing and environment core to fulfill the one arts, the one credit arts requirement for graduation. Students are taking foundations of studio art at Weber, can take drawing and painting or other selected art classes. And you can just look at the program planning guide for those. Next slide, please. So here are some of the other art electives. You can see there's a wide variety, anything from AP studio art, to sculpture, to movie making, animation, and we've, we've also added senior experience. Uh, so there's a wide array of classes we can, that the students can take in their four years at Triver High School. Next slide. So here's a holistic view of the, of the art program at Schreiber High School. Um, first, the students take one of the foundations courses, and then they take courses that fit their interests. It's pretty simple, really. Um, some follow a direct line that seems like more what you would think of when you're thinking of a classical artist. So for example, studio art, then drawing and painting, and then advanced painting, and then AP studio art. Others take what used to be less traditional paths, but are becoming more and more traditional with studio art and photography, computer graphics, movie making and animation. We've actually added animation in the last uh, year or so to our, well, what used to be TV production class. We're now um, it's basically the same class, but obviously we, we changed with the times and it's movie making and animation now. Um, other courses beyond that, for example, um, we have advanced painting, sculpture and ceramics. There's just all sorts of courses and, and students can mix and match those courses as they feel um, their interests grow. Next slide. Uh, we have lots of art students, uh, even though it's only required for one year, and you'll hear this about music as well. Um, our annual enrollment in high school art is over 850 students, um, and that those are electives. So no one has to take art classes, but we still have about 800 to 900 each year. Next slide. Um, a lot of honors. I won't read them all. Um, I will say the second from the end, we have multiple winners in the Congressional Art competition and the one before that, the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Even this year, uh, virtually, we had quite a few students that were honored in the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Next slide. All right, the music program. Um, it's mostly a performance-based music program. And if we go to the next slide, um, it is similar to art in that there's a foundations course, but the, the ensembles count as foundation course courses. So freshman band, freshman chorus, freshman orchestra, and we students can also take music in our lives if they would like to do that. So that or any of the art courses fulfill the graduation requirement, but we still have hundreds and hundreds of students who take the art and music classes, even though they don't need to. Um, we have had a few students who've taken music theory and song writing as their foundations course, um, but it's kind of rare. It's usually a student that might be advanced in piano or guitar or an instrument like that, but that is a possibility. Next slide. Um, as you see, we have a lot of ensembles. Um, we also have, as I mentioned, music theory and songwriting. We have AP music theory, which is a great course where the students um, have done really well over the last few years. And we have sound engineering recording, 
which is maybe five or six years old at, at the at the oldest. It might even be four, um, but we're actually even adding more sections to that. So that's a great course. And we just got a new recording studio, thanks to the Ed Foundation and a generous grant from them. And we also offer music improvisation. Next slide. Um, so this is district wide. Um, some of you remember when we used to be able to get on stage like that and put hundreds of students next to each other singing. So hopefully at some point we'll be able to do that again. Um, but there's 2,130 students enrolled in elective music ensembles throughout the school district. So that doesn't include the, the pre-K, the first, the kindergarten, the second grade students. Um, and it doesn't even include the elementary choir students. And there's still 2,100 students involved in elective music in Port Washington. Next slide. And the music department has also been honored quite a bit. Um, we see at the bottom, 2020 Best Communities for Music Education. Uh, that's actually our sixth year in a row with um, getting that award and that honor. And we're really proud of that. And that has to do with, that really reflects our program, but it also reflects the, the community and the school administration um, and everything that the students do and everything that the teachers do. It's really a wonderful, thing. Um, so we have some old all county results there. Uh, but you can see we have between 90 and 100 all county students um, each year in our district. And then we also have lots of all state all eastern and all national music ensemble members. Next slide. And hopefully we'll be able to do this again. We also like to take trips to the art museums and the um, and also to do music trips. I was hoping to add Disney photos to that particular slide this year, but we were unable to do that um, because COVID um, has changed a lot of things. But hopefully we'll get to traveling again. And I think the students really look forward to those trips um, with our music program and our art program. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Scully. Really appreciate it. Uh, we are very proud of both our art and music programs. Uh, they serve lots of kids. We know the community uh, supports both art and music wonderfully. And we, of course, want that uh, support to continue um, as both those programs will continue to grow undoubtedly. So thanks again, Mr. Scully. Really appreciate uh, you being here tonight. Uh, before we move on, I, the way the, the Q&A is going to work is uh, there'll be some questions that we can answer live and we'll try to include that as we're speaking and then other questions will uh, type an answer and they'll become public at that time for everybody to see. Um, shame on, on me for not addressing the elephant in the room and that is that we're doing this uh, virtually for a reason and so there are questions about whether or not there'll be in-person instruction uh, full-time in September. And I know that that's, that question may be on your minds. It's certainly on ours too. The short answer is we don't know yet. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen. We don't know how uh, the virus is going to progress. We don't know what state ed is gonna say just yet. Um, and we're still, and we are still trying to manage our way uh, through every day. Um, so I know we all want to know the answer to that question. We're just not going to know just yet. So I appreciate your patience. Another question that's been asked a few times is um, concerns about the size of the eighth grade class that's coming in and what impact does that have on um, how we program, how we schedule uh, the size of classes. You know, there's a more complicated answer built into that. Mr. Weiss is also our master scheduler, um, as well as the assistant principal for your class. In short, our class is, our, I'm sorry, our school is designed with some flexibility and malleability in terms of how we program. And so while class sizes might fluctuate from year to year by one or two students, depending on um, the number of students who've requested a class, it is designed to move with the students, meaning student requests is what drives um, what courses we run. Student requests is what drives how many students end up in a class. We obviously have some spatial limitations. This, of course, imagines that we're all together. Um, in short, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, and um, 
we're all back together uh, starting in September. Um, yeah, school is a, is a crowded, vibrant place that is full of life and exciting. Uh, we are actually gonna start, um, and you've all been very experienced at this with construction. We're gonna start next year. Uh, actually, we're gonna start in late March, early April with construction that'll carry through the entire 2021-2022 um, school year. Um, that will include a brand new front of our building. It will include a brand new tech uh, technology classroom space that will add to the size of the Shriver footprint. Uh, but it, it'll be exciting along the way. Anyhow, um, if you have a more detailed question or want a more detailed answer about our program uh, and how programming works, please send Mr. Weiss or I um, an email. Okay, moving along. Next, I uh, introduce uh, Mrs. Robin Block and Ms. Margaret Rizzo, who make up 100% of the Family and Consumer Science Department. Uh, welcome to both of you. Take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Margaret Rizzo. And I'm Robin Block, and we're the Family and Consumer Sciences teachers, also known as the FACTS Department here at Shriver. Um, we're so excited to welcome you students to the high school next year. Many of them have been taking class at Weber, so enrolling with us would be a great way to take what they've been learning to the next level. Um, instead of the courses being short units on many topics, our courses are specialized according to the student interest. So the whole um, course, you know, focuses on a specific topic. So the first ones that your students would most likely be able to enroll in, as Mr. Scully said, they could fulfill their art or music requirement by choosing clothing and textiles and housing and environment as sequence, which is offered through our department. Um, and that would also fulfill that fine arts requirement that all students need to graduate high school in New York State. Um, and so in clothing and textiles in the fall, students learn about fashion design elements and principles. We relate to both male and female fashion trends. We explore fashion history and develop hand and machine sewn skills while completing projects of their choice. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see many different students with their projects. Um, and then in the spring, housing and environment focuses on personal budgeting, weighing pros and cons of housing choice priorities. Um, we apply those elements and principles of design to interior design and students eventually build their own model final design product, which I think there's a few of in that picture as well. Um, we also bring in representatives of from design related colleges. Even this year, we had a Zoom presentation by FIDM. So we're still trying to continue that even in our challenging time. Um, and so we've been having a really successful year so far, although we've had to be doing things a little bit differently. Um, we overall do offer eight elective courses. So if you go to the next slide, we're gonna give you a little preview to um, options that your students can take in the future. Um, and so our first two that we're doing this year are creative cuisine and culture and food. And again, while we've made some minor changes to the pan during the pandemic, we have been able to introduce our new creative cuisine class. Um, students were able to practice food styling, food plating, garnishing, food photography, um, and some industry standard concepts and terminology. And this spring, culture and food students will take a world tour of cuisine while preparing and evaluating various um, foods throughout the traditions of cultures all around the globe. Okay, so uh, big bake shop students practice both the uh, science of baking and the art of decorating while preparing many baked goods, including bagels, pretzels, cakes, cookies, pastries, and so much more. Uh, foods and nutrition focuses on making healthy choices while using seasonal produce and celebrating various holidays while practicing basic cooking, cleaning, and entertaining skills. And all of our cooking classes include food style, uh, food network style competitions, which activate students' research uh, and marketing skills in addition to their culinary talents. Um, these classes encourage uh, teamwork and communication skills, which again, we've had to change a little bit, but we're still including the teamwork. And um, our plan is to offer uh, two food options each year in alternating years. So if you could go to the next slide, please. Did it, did it go? Yep. 
There we go. All right. Sorry. Um, so uh, our last class that we're going to talk about is human development. Um, in human development, students learn about child development from con conception to about age 10. Um, they also have an opportunity of completing an internship at the Port Washington Daily Pre-K and or elementary school. Um, again, this year we've had to make some changes. We've been doing some uh, digital virtual Google Meets with the elementary school students that have been very successful, as well as um, creating an interactive um, website for the elementary school students, uh, including different activities that the high school students have been making for them. Um, so this is a great class uh, for any child who, you know, is thinking of pursuing a career with working with children um, or wants to, you know, get involved with children on a regular basis. Uh, in conclusion, all of our classes uh, not only allow our students to experience hands-on learning in high interest areas, but they also get to practice uh, their research and academic skills. So please visit our website. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us um, by email or, or however you want to get in touch with us. And we're really looking forward to meeting you and your children in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Block and Ms. Rizzo. Really appreciate it. I'm sorry about having a quick trigger finger on the slides there. <laughs> My apologies. Um, like many of our programs, I think you'll find while the, uh, the teachers who make up the department are few in number, they touch lots of, of lives and they become um, places where kids want to go. Um, and that's just a testament to the teachers themselves, to the quality of the programs and to their openness on all levels to continually evolve their programs to the ever-changing needs of students. And that is certainly the case in family and consumer science. So again, thanks to both of you. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving along, let me introduce to you from our business department, another department that has well, only two faculty members. Uh, one of them is here tonight. Please welcome Mrs. Jennifer Herber. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. As Iris said, yes, we are small but mighty. Uh, that's particularly funny because if you knew me, I am six feet tall and I never would get a chance to say that I am small. So, um, so anyway, yes, there's only two of us here. Mrs. Erickson uh, couldn't be here because she is on maternity leave. So any moment now, we might have some exciting news for our department. And um, I've had three children of my own. And I remember that moment beforehand that I can tell you I'd rather be here <laughs> than where she is. So um, let me tell you a little bit about our business education department. It says there our office room, we're on, um, on the way to the library. So when you get familiar with the school, you'll see we're, um, we're right there on the second floor on the way over to the library. All right, next slide. Why take a business course? Well, I think um, it's practical and it's fun. So two good reasons in my mind. Um, you can see here, there's a lot of uh, possible answers. If you would stay practical, you're gonna get some real world skills. Um, you might also um, you know, say that you're gonna get some technology skills. These are valuable parts of working in any of these business courses. Uh, but you also get some good soft skills, whether it's networking, or decision making or managing projects. So, um, so there's a lot of just practical knowledge that comes from it, but there's, they're also fun. And this is an elective, so it's meant to be fun. We have competitions even this year with all the changes. We haven't gone on in-person competitions, but we've been able to do them virtually. Um, and this year, you know, there were no in-person field trips, but there's still, um, there's still ways to make it fun. So, so in, in my mind, there's lots of good reasons, both for um, practical reasons and for fun. Next slide, please. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the courses that we have, because um, Schreiber means business to us. So on the left side, you see some of the courses that give you more of the raw skills. Um, the first three listed there are computer related. And um, as a ninth grader, your students could be eligible to take any one of these. 
We offer courses at different levels. So if you're more of a beginner, we have the computer skills for college and careers. It really starts at the very beginning, whether it's, you know, how do you download a file? How do you upload? And really um, some of the more basic skills. As you get more advanced, uh, your, your child might be interested in a certification class where they take the course and then at the end of the course can take a test. Oops, we're gonna go back. Um, so they can actually take a course where they get a Microsoft Office certification, whether that's in Word or Excel or PowerPoint. So those are valuable resume skills that, that uh, your child could have uh, right away at the end of a course, they take the test. And we've had a lot of luck um, last semester, all the students passed. So, um, so it's just a nice selling point. On the bottom of the left side, there's two other courses in accounting. So a student would progress from the initial one where um, they get the basics of accounting. That can even count as a math credit. Um, and then the second course after that would be the college honors where there's potential to earn three college credits from LIU Post and you get honors credit. So on the left side, as I said, they're, they're more the, the hard skills, if you will, technology and, and accounting. On the right side, you see we have a number of courses that really are about exploring different careers and areas of interest whether it's marketing, just the basics of marketing, or maybe there's a particular interest in sports and entertainment marketing. Um, and as you go down the list, there's virtual enterprise. That's an entrepreneurship course where students actually form a business and get to practice all parts within a department, whether it's coming up with the product and the strategy, the marketing, the finance. Um, so that one, uh, you can get up to six college credits at LIU, which is fantastic. It's a full year course, and you can get three credits for the fall and the spring semester. Um, Moving further down, there's business law honors, which, um, you know, for students that are interested in, in more of the legal side of business, you can get honors credit for that. And then at the bottom, there is a portfolio management class where students compete with a fake money portfolio of $100,000 and get to see how quickly they can grow it within uh, the two to three months over the course of the semester. So uh, only two folks, but we managed to offer 10 courses and hopefully a range of some of the hard skills and some of the career exploration courses. Next slide, please. So thank you for um, listening to me give you a little background about, um, about the courses we offer. Um, if you would like to know more, or if you have questions, of course, you can put them in the chat here or you can follow up with, um, I would say either of us after, but I think Ms. Erickson's gonna be a little busy, so probably preferable, uh, preferably me. So on the next slide, slide please. There's, our, there's my email, it's jherber at portnet.org. And, um, and I would, you know, I'd be happy to help answer any questions as you explore possible courses in the business department. That's all from me. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Herber. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, once again, we are proud of our elective programs. Uh, again, I just said earlier, Schreiber, uh, there's, the depth and breadth of our programs um, really uh, have always impressed me and I think fee, uh, serve our students well and business is just another example. So thank you uh, for being here. And sorry about the slides. I'm trying to manage a lot right now. This is really overwhelming for me. Okay, um, moving on to technology, I'd like to introduce Mr. Fred Feldman. Oh, hello, my name is Fred Feldman. Um, I'm currently half of the uh, technology department. Um, the one course that uh, Mr. Scully talked about before in art um, is drawing, design and drawing for production. That is kind of a leading course for a lot of the technology things. Um, although an art teacher is teaching it um, this year and for the last two years by working close coordination with him uh, for kind of matching up like different design techniques that we might use in future classes. Um, so again, it's just, you know, it'll. It, Kind of like the the course name describes, um, you learn how to design things and then how to draw and try to actually try to produce um, certain items uh, within the course. And I believe we can forward to the next slide. Okay, the next course is a little tricky. Um, is intro to uh, the introduction to STEM course. It's only offered to ninth graders, and it is a conglomeration with the science department, the technology department, math department, and the social science uh, department. Your students, if they enroll in that, they will um, have a different teacher from a different subject area each quarter, and then they kind of rotate through the different um, departments as they go. So like the first quarter that if they're with me in technology, um, they might transfer then to the math department, and then they will go to the science department and the social science. I think that is the actual rotation that goes through. 
and whichever department they start with, they will kind of rotate through a um, bunch of different topics that we kind of, I kind of work on the, obviously the engineering side and that kind of thing. So I kind of give them a little understanding what engineering is, um, math and social science. They kind of work a little bit on the research, just some general math program, uh, math types of problems and uh, science. I'm not exactly sure what he runs through in that section, but I'm sure they might mention that a little bit later in the day or the night here. Um, so like we said, we um, I think the rest of the descriptions there are pretty, um, okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, available ninth grade technology electives are um, that we offer for it's from strictly through the technology department, or we offer drones and avionics to ninth graders. Um, we actually have a different couple of different types of drones we, we fly, and we're looking at getting some more now with COVID for doing a little bit more programmable flying. Um, but like it says there, that is a term, uh, it's the term of the class is one semester. And they generally, they used to build and fly drones. Now we're doing more flying drones because they were uh, smaller kits. So we can't really work in groups this year. Uh, but we learned some basic avionic pr principles and some FAA guidelines. The networking and computer repair course is also a semester. And that is just giving them a little, a little basic understanding of what's in the computer, that kind of stuff. We, you know, if there are some broken computers, we'll try to repair them. But the computers we look at the insides of, we actually use for our networking. Um, so we don't break them. We try not to. Um, but we generally use those computers then to make simple networks within the classroom and try to learn some um, different types of networking, um, like local area networks versus large area networks and domains and that kind of a thing. And I'm not sure if we have another slide with the other courses. Okay, we do. Okay. Other technology electives for the future. Um, we have three levels of automotive technology. Uh, Mr. Miller is a popular um, teacher with the students, and he's normally getting a very high, you know, uh, number of students looking to take his courses. But then we also offer courses in architecture. Um, so we have currently have three levels of architecture. We have two levels of woodworking, two levels of robotics. We have a 3D printing and design course. Um, Introduction to electronics, electrical engineering, looking at simple, um, smaller state. So that's not really like household elect electronics. It's more of your, um, like what's inside the computer, those kind of types of things like resistors, transistors, and that kind of stuff. And then we have a principles of engineering course and an introduction to engineering science honors course. The engineering science honors course and the robotics courses are, you can get college credits for those. If you take those, um, the uh, engineering science course is, through SUNY Stony Brook and the robotics course is through Farmingdale State College. Um, and if you have any questions, um, Feldman, two Fs, two Ns at portnet.org. I don't have that email address there, but I am on the website and I think I'm good. Thanks so much, Mr. Feldman. There's a lot, again, I point out a lot going on in technology, ever changing. And as I mentioned a little while ago, uh, there'll be a new uh, technology space being built throughout the year uh, starting the end of March, early April this year, and then through all of 20, uh, 2021 and through 2022, uh, we'll be opening it in September of 2022. So lots of excitement uh, in technology. Thanks again, Mr. Feldman. Okay, we are now um, uh, moving to our department presentations. And I think this may be out of order, so I apologize. No, no, I was right. Okay, so please welcome the department chairperson for social studies, Mr. Larry Schultz. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Pernick. I am Mr. Schultz. I am social studies department chair here at Schreiber. I've been here for 15 years. Been the department chair for the last seven. That's my contact information should you need me. Next slide. All right, at, at Schreiber and in New York State in general, social studies is a four-year requirement for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. After grades 10, Global 2, and grades 11, uh, U.S. History, there's a Regents exam in both of those. Uh, your children come in and they take Global 1. Uh, there's only regular sections of uh, Global 1, so that's the course that all of them will be signed up to take. In 12th grade, is a full year long requirement. And we offer multiple avenues with which to do this, including the senior experience options that we have. And we need to cover economics and participation in government. We do that in a whole host of creative ways. Next slide. Okay, so your children are coming in and the course they're gonna be taking first is Global History and Geography One. Uh, the curriculum starts with the dawn of man. 
and it ends in the year 1750, which they call the first global age. Um, fun fact, they picked the year 1750 because nothing specifically happens then. And this way they didn't feel like they were playing to one group or the other. That's the actual true story. I was told that by the Board of Regents. Um, and also there is a ninth grade honors option. There's not an honors class, but there's an honors option. Um, it's a project done where students read history, uh, historiographies and they write responses, uh, analyzing them and comparing them. Um, at the end of the year, honors credit, credit is given if you meet the requirements of your course instructor. Okay, next slide. All right, there, we do offer a, a lot of electives. Most of them are 10 through 12, but we do have three that are available for ninth grade. As Mr. Feldman just said, uh, we have introduction to STEM. We do the social science component of that, where you look at a lot of psychology, sociology, research, and experimentation. Um, and then we also have communications courses, uh, Fundamentals of Radio Podcasting 1 and 2. Uh, it's, it's a sequence. Uh, we have the WDOT studios here in Schreiber, and there you can make your own show and make your own podcast. Uh, we have shows on everything from sports uh, to music to entertainment to barbecuing. So it's a fun thing to do, and the students seem to enjoy it. Next slide. All right, our, our department, uh, we also have the most AP courses in the building. Um, it's also well, because the most AP courses are in social studies in general. But starting in 10th grade, we have a wide selection of courses. In fact, there are actually two to choose from in 10th grade, AP European history, which is a little bit more of your typical, um, you know, your grandfather's uh, version of a history course, more kind of in depth. Then AP world history, which is more of a survey course looking at from the year 1200 to the present. Uh, in 11th grade, we have AP US history. Uh, then oh, the elective open to both juniors and seniors, AP psychology, uh, which is a part of the course that I teach. Um, AP comparative government looks at six different governments around the world and compares their government structure and um, political science. Uh, then there's AP government and politics, which is looking at the US government. And then combined course, uh, AP microeconomics and AP macroeconomics in senior year, uh, looks at economics, and taught by Mr. Medico. Up next. Uh, in uh, social studies as well, we have the social science research program, which is our contribution to the research program. It's a three-year commitment from grades 10 to 12. Only 10 students are chosen per grade to enter a series of competitions, the most notable being the Regeneron Science Talent Search. Um, and That'll come about later in the year, in midway through ninth grade year, uh, they can take a qualifying exam and then there's a series of interviews and things like that. Um, so if you have students that might be interested or are of that level, keep that in mind as well. And next. All right, and finally, our other electives we offer in grades 10 through 12, we have two social science electives, basic concepts in psychology and sociology. Great if you're not looking to take an AP course, you just want to take it, get introduced to these topics in a fun and exciting way. We have a history um, elective two, World War II, popular class dealing with that legendary conflict. We have two law classes taught by our resident lawyer, Mr. Vanella, criminal law and legal problems. And again, we have our communications courses listed at the bottom. So again, I'm Larry Schultz. You can email me if you have any other questions about social studies. And uh, I look forward to meeting all your children next year. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Greatly appreciate it. Okay. We'll move right along and to the English department. And please welcome the English department chairperson, Mrs. Eileen Mills. Mrs. Mills. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight. Um, I'll give you the very brief 30 second biography about Mrs. Mills. I've been teaching at Schreiber High School for 20 years, uh, six of those years in the capacity of the department chair. I have three children, two of them are currently in the building. And so I think it is safe to assume that I have a vested interest in our programs. So tonight I'm going to focus mostly on ninth grade because I know hearing about 11th and 12th grade just seems so far away. And I know that your kids figure this stuff out very quickly and it's uh, not as complicated as it might appear tonight. 
And so I'm gonna focus mostly on ninth, but I do have some information about the other grades as well. Um, and so next slide. All right, so freshman English. Um, for many years, freshman English was uh, a semester course and only in recent years have we uh, made it a full year class, uh, but we still approach it in terms of semesters. So the first semester, our ninth grade team focuses mostly on the short story and the novel. Um, these stories really focus a lot on identity and questions um, about how to best approach a text and in a way of having a discussion um, that focuses on real literary analysis skills. How do we take apart a text? Um, basically, freshman English teachers emphasize to your students that we are going to give you the skills that you need to be successful while you're at Triber, right? So freshman year is the, the formative skills that we'll give to you so that we make sure that you're successful sophomore, junior, senior year, and beyond. So we work a lot on active listening, close reading and annotation. Uh, early on in your child's experience with English, you're gonna hear a lot about the literary analysis paragraph. Um, this is really quite challenging for them. Um, and we spend a lot of time helping them to learn how to speak about literary elements, use quotes effectively, speak directly to an author's aims. Um, and to do all of this in just an analysis paragraph requires a lot of skills. And so we work mostly first semester on this skill. And then we move into the longer literary analysis papers second semester. Second semester is really the focus on poetry and the drama. Um, you will probably smile and remember reading Romeo and Juliet when your child brings that book home next year. They also read 12 Angry Men, The Glass Menagerie, and classic um, canonical uh, plays that are sort of just like part of the, uh, the expectation of all freshmen in this part of the country. Next slide. Sophomore English is not that much different than freshman English. All students take sophomore English. First semester, uh, even though it's a year long course, our focus is on texts of nonconformity. Um, students read anything from Lord of the Flies, Catcher in the Rye, a separate piece, all texts that you're familiar with. They will not be reading all of these. Uh, teachers select uh, some of these, and then we integrate more uh, texts that are uh, more modern voices, more uh, multicultural voices to round out their experience and get them ready to tackle some of the more specific themes that they might be um, selecting into is, as juniors. Second semester, they do again foundational texts. We have Lorraine Hansberry's foundational play, Raisin in the Sun. And it's also their last opportunity um, to read Shakespeare in a required format. So they either do Macbeth or Othello, and some teachers even um, study Hamlet. That would be, so they're, they're required to read two Shakespearean texts while they're at Schreiber. Afterwards, if they want more, that's when we get to the electives. So the skills that we focus on uh, in sophomore year are to prepare them for the English regions that they'll be taking as juniors. So proposing counter arguments, calling evidence from the text, and really um, becoming a little bit more sophisticated in how they interpret literature and apply that to their writing. Next slide. Um, and so in freshman and sophomore year, students can participate similar to social studies in our honors program. It's not an honors class. It's an independent study where students who are earning an A in English can participate. And basically uh, they work with their teacher who also becomes their mentor for this outside work. Um, and the goal really is to apply all of the skills that they're learning in their English class into this independent work. Uh, teachers create small cohorts of students reading the same book uh, and, and create small learning environments where they can discuss the book and um, have uh, richer, um, more meaningful interactions with the text that they're reading on their own. And so they read throughout the course of the school year, four texts, right? So that's like two each semester roughly, and they write four additional papers. And so all the work that we're doing in the freshman and sophomore classes is really gearing them towards being successful in this program as well. If uh, students complete all of the work successfully at the end of the school year, you'll see that their, their class will be changed from freshman English, sophomore English to freshman English honors, sophomore English honors. Next slide. 
Okay, so 11th and 12th grade is when things become a little bit more interesting for our students. And we offer uh, semester long courses, but we don't call them electives, we call them selectives because students are required to take two of them. So in junior year, we offer eight courses that are really tailored to students' interests. If they're interested in theater or if they're interested in writing, they might take persuasive writing, creative writing, our literature uh, interest, interested students um, take uh, very popular courses, American literature, cultural conflicts, utopia, dystopia has been a long uh, favorite of our students. So they, they take two of those courses according to their interest throughout the school year. And then if they want to accelerate further, we have a course called the AP Language and Composition. Um, I don't know if anybody has explained this yet tonight. It's a little complicated, but your kids will understand it. Our courses meet four out of every six days. And so if they opt into taking, or if they qualify to take the AP Language and Composition course, basically the way you can see it, uh, think of it is that they'll have English every day, right? So they, it, in their regular English class is four out of six days, and this is two out of six days. So they'll basically have English every day. 12th grade, next slide. Um, we also offer semester courses tailored to students' interests. Um, currently I'm teaching the communication arts class, which is the public speaking class. And I'm discovering that I'm actually teaching two classes. I'm teaching the kids to learn how to speak on their computers and also in person. And so it's quite a challenge, but it's uh, definitely an opportunity for us to continue to, to learn and grow together. Uh, we offer additional writing classes. There's the college writing and journalism and an array of literature classes that are really tailored to student interests. For students, again, who want to accelerate, we offer a full year course, so they would have to make the decision to either take one of the selectives or to take the AP literature course, which is a traditional four by six literature class that ends in the AP exam in May. And that's basically our program, but we do have, if you go to the next slide, um, something that I wanted to, to share about students who need enrichment. Uh, we also offer that. So we like to accelerate our students and offer honors options, but we recognize that not every student is uh, the student who wants to, to avail of those things and actually just needs more support. And so uh, their eighth grade teacher may have identified your kids, or we might identify a student who needs more scaffolding, more support, more sort of handholding to achieve the benchmarks that we're working on in our classes. And so um, similar to the two by six AP language course, the reading program works in a similar way where students have their regular English class four by six, and then they do their reading program where they get assistance from a reading teacher uh, to help them be successful in their English class two out of the six days. So again, it's just like having English every day. Okay. Um, in 11th and 12th grade, the, the reading program kind of transitions to a more traditional English class with uh, sh more structured scaffolded supports built into the regular English program. And then finally, next class, next slide rather. Uh, is the Writing Center. Um, we weren't able to run the Writing Center this year, but I'm hopeful that next year or in, in the coming um, months, I hope that we might be able to reinstate our Writing Center. Um, it is an invaluable service that we offer to your kids. Um, it's open every day uh, during your child's lunch period. They can walk in, they can just make an appointment. Um, I have found with my own children that it's good for them to know that you know we have it. Um, I think that sometimes just hearing an explanation of writing in, an, in another way from another person might just make things click for them um, or just having somebody look over their writing just gives them a little bit more confidence and clarity about what they're working on in their class. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to bring this back next year. Um, and if not, we'll, we'll find a plan B that will just continue to support your kids with their efforts in writing. And that's me. I had to unmute myself. Thank you so much, Mrs. Mills. I appreciate your time uh, in representing such a marvelous program. Um, thank you again. Okay, we are going to move along. I believe math is next. Please welcome math department chairperson, Dr. Brian Gorman. Thank you, Dr. Pernick. Uh, welcome and good evening, parents. Uh, my name is Brian Gorman. I am the math chair of the mathematics department or the department chair. Um, this is currently my seventh year at Schreiber. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is my contact information. Um, so the, the slides go pretty quick and there's always a, a ton of information to share. 
um, and always more that progresses throughout the years um, with different grade levels and things like that. So please always feel free to reach out um, with questions to me um, by phone um, or by email. Next slide. All right. Um, so Schreiber is very unique because um, we do have this modified block schedule um, where certain classes meet um, four out of our six day cycles um, and some meet six out of the six, day, six days um, and others meet on a two day cycle. Um, it's really just a, a wonderful program um, that really helps us um, add a lot of um, different options for students. Um, so most of the math courses, um, students, especially entering ninth grade, um, are pretty much preset depending on what courses they took um, in Weber in eighth grade. Um, so students that are currently in regular eighth grade next year, they'll either take the Algebra 1 four day or the Algebra 1 six day. Um, for students that are currently enrolled in eight accelerated um, next year, they're um, either will go to geometry or math nine honors. Uh, the only really true elective for ninth graders um, in math would be the introduction to STEM, um, which we um, had been mentioned earlier, just the different options where we kind of rotate through the different um, STEM courses. Um, so math also has a, a piece in there as well. Um, the one thing with the six day algebra course, um, it's really just an excellent model, just that offers extra support um, for students that just need um, more structure and a more consistent um, learning environment. Uh, they meet for an hour every day with the same teacher. Um, there's no lab component. Um, like I said, it's the same teacher every day for an hour, um, very structured, very consistent, um, and just an excellent model to really help support students that need. Um, just a little bit on the bottom there about extra help. Um, so extra help is basically built into um, the student and the teacher's schedule. Um, so every year, um, math is designated like a certain period for extra help. Um, this year it's 3-1, I think last year it was 4-2. So it, it changes year to year, um, but every math teacher is always available at that time um, in the Math Resource Center. Um, so usually it's in the math office. This year it's virtual um, and we'll kind of see what, you know, what changes in the upcoming you know, months as we hear more um, as we move forward. Uh, next slide. Okay, um, so as Dr. Pernick said earlier, there's just a, a wealth of information to try to absorb. Um, this is just a little bit about um, the, from the program planning guide, um, basically explaining what the makeup of each course is, how they differ, um, some of the prerequisite required information that they need, things like that. Um, all of this is also provided on the, the math website, the homepage as well. Like there's a link um, for the program planning guide with just the math courses that not only outline what courses um, freshmen are eligible for, um, but as they kind of progress through sophomore, junior and senior year, they can kind of map out um, what courses they want to take. Um, it also shows the AP courses that are available. Um, and really most importantly, it shows what grade level the courses are available um, and what the prerequisites are. You know, a lot of the math courses are built off um, prerequisites. Uh, next slide. Um, and then this is just another little um, snippet, um, also just describing what courses are offered. Um, also too, you'll find in the program planning guide, uh, not only does, um, are the math courses there, but we also do have two computer science courses um, that are open starting sophomore year. Um, and those are AP Computer Science Principles and AP Computer Science A. Um, and both are just great opportunities uh, for students that really um, are interested in the computer sciences, coding, uh, programming, things like that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, all right, a little bit just about um, diploma criteria for math. Um, so every student must pass the Algebra 1 Regents um, to get their Regents Diploma. For mathematics, students are required um, to earn three math credits. Um, most continue on and do pursue a math class uh, senior year as well. Um, 
roughly, I think 85% of the, the students at Schreiber continue on and take an additional math class um, senior year, um, whether it be pre-calculus, AP calculus, financial algebra, um, or other electives when they get to that, um, that year. Um, and then also to another just designation um, for students that do pass all three readings exams, uh, they do get a designation on their diploma um, called an advanced designation if they pass algebra one geometry and algebra two. Next slide, please. Uh, in addition to uh, the courses from earlier, we do have a couple other additional course offerings. Um, and they're, they're um, courses that are just built in to have additional teacher and support staff available just for students that um, just, again, need further structure and support um, to assist them through um, these courses um, on there. So we have the Algebra One Flick and the Algebra One Steps program. Um, and then math also does have a uh, dedicated research program that starts in 10th grade um, and then continues on in 11th uh, and 12th grade. Um, and again, on the website, because um, it doesn't really pertain to entering freshmen just yet, um, but on the math webpage, uh, there is detailed information about the math research program on there. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, just a little slide in here, uh, you know, as we transition to the Common Core a few years back, um, just a little bit with the performance indicators um, and what their scaled scores um, basically apply to um, these different levels and indicators on there. Just the breakdown of that. Next slide. All right, so this kind of complicated diagram here is probably one of the most important slides. And again, it's, it's on the website as well. Um, but this shows all the different um, pathways to graduation. And like I said, you do need three math credits, um, but it does break down um, the different really kind of tracks as we go through, whether you're an accelerated, regular, um, and then towards the bottom, you'll see it has the different AP course offerings, um, the different options year to year and things like that. Um, so this, so ninth grade, I, I think is pretty, pretty basic what pathway students will start, but as they start to progress um, really out of algebra two, that's when they start to have many options to enter into the AP courses uh, and things like that. Um, I mean, that's it for my, my quick slideshow, but I really look forward to um, working with everybody over the next four years um, and all the students that are entering. And again, any questions, um, anything you wanna discuss, um, I know some of you I've already spoken to um, this year. Um, feel free to call my office, send me an email, um, and we can discuss uh, your questions. Have a wonderful night. Thanks very much, Dr. Gorman. This would be a good time to remind everybody that there is no expectation that you remember all of this uh, in any of our subject areas. There is way too much information for us to present to you. And that's why we will post this entire presentation on our YouTube channel, and we will post uh, the slide presentation on Mr. Weiss's um, page on the Schreiber website. Just give us a day or two to get those, both of them up. Um, we do that because, you know, questions are gonna come up at all different times over the next few months. We wanna give you an opportunity to go back and look for our contact information, look for information uh, like the flow charts is going to help you along the way. So please don't worry if, uh, if you forget some of this information. There's a lot to drink in. Okay, moving on to world languages. Uh, happy to welcome our department chairperson for world languages, Mrs. Carol Ferrante. You're muted. It's the first time I've said that all night. Of course it would be me. Okay, well, thank you, of course. Well, I had to have work somehow, right? Saying that. Okay, so thank you so much, Dr. Pernick. Um, I wanted to welcome everybody here again, um, and thank you again for coming. If we could go back to the previous, uh, previous slide, please. Um, the World Language Diplomas, once again, Carol Ferrante. 
Here are our four languages that we offer uh, at Schreiber. They're a continuation of the languages that the students have been taking for the past three years. So we have French, Latin, um, Italian, and of course, Spanish. So um, next, next slide, please. Okay, this is on our webpage and it has a list of our teachers um, <clears throat> that, are, are, that are currently working in the department. Here is also my contact information, okay, cferrante at portnet.org, and you can find that very easily accessible on the website. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, if we talk a little bit about the language program, uh, I believe that the language is really the only subject that follows the children into high school. So when they're in Weber, they studied language um, six, seventh and eighth grade, which, it, which comprises level one. So the students down at the middle school during those three, three years, they are taking those three different levels of languages and it only, it amounts to level one. At the end of which they, they take the FLAX A exam at the end of the eighth grade. When they come to, Fla uh, to Schreiber, they go automatically into the level two of the language they've been studying all along. Uh, the subsequent year, year, and when they are sophomores, they take FLAX B, okay, or in any level three of, of, of language that they uh, will be studying. Okay, please, the next slide. <clears throat> Thank you. So I'm sure a lot of you probably are asking what is FLAX? If you haven't heard of it, um, it's, it's something rather new. Um, the FLAX actually is the exam that took the place of the form of proficiency and regions exams that were given in world's languages. So FLAX A is the form of proficiency exam and FLAX B is the form of regions exam. So why do they no, no longer offer a regions exam in language? And the answer is really simple. Back when um, the state was um, confronted with all of their fiscal problems and economic difficulties, they had to try and save money. So the easiest exam for them to get rid of was the language exam only because they had to offer these exams in every language possible. So they had to offer it not only in the languages that were taught in the schools, but even languages that really aren't so commonly taught. They had to offer a Greek regents exam. Um, they offered um, a, a Persian, a Hebrew regents exam. They would offer an Arabic regents exam. So it, it, it really was very costly for them to create all of these exams. And then of course, to um, find the people who were going to sit and correct them. So they decided to get rid of the, lang the language regents exams. And then our organization, which was originally called Foreign Language Association of Chairpersons and Supervisors, they got together and they said, we have to make sure that we, have, we hold our students um, accountable for language learning. So what, has, um, what, was, what had taken place then, every year they came up with an exam, okay, for the proficiency exam, which is the FLAX A exam that they take at the end of eighth grade, and also the FLAX B, okay, which is what they take in uh, level three, three R, four R, three H, okay? So although, although it's not listed as a regents exam, it's not listed on the calendar, the state has guaranteed us and they have reserved the third Monday of June for the administration of the FLAX A and B exams. So FLAX A is normally given in the morning in the AM and FLAX B is given in the afternoon. So the students who take the FLAX B exam and pass are eligible to receive an advanced regents diploma if all their other requirements have been met. Next slide, please, Dr. Pernick. Okay, so here is the flow chart and I'm starting off with French, Italian, and Latin because they're a little easier to follow. When every student comes into Schreiber, they will be in, as we said before, level two. So French and Italian, really, they almost mirror one another. So we have uh, French two, Italian two, then um, they would go to, of course, um, a regions, or in honors, when they're in sophomore year, starting in level three, that's when the students can be designated to follow the honors path. And um, then they would follow three honors, four honors and AP language. Um, if they are on uh, the regents path, they would take um, three R and the same for Italian. And then they would go to advanced French language in um, the post flax year, which would be their junior year 
And then they also have the ability to continue with language in, in senior year. So alter, we alternate these two courses on the non-honors path. So we have advanced French language and advanced French culture and civilization, and exactly the same thing we have for Italian. So they just flip flop. The only thing that's different with French and Italian is that intensive uh, French um, is offered on alternating years with intensive Latin. You see those in the highlighted boxes. And basically these intensive courses, their levels one and two. So students receive double the amounts of credits. They, see two, they receive two credits upon successful co completion of these courses because they're learning two years of a language in one. Um, so this upcoming year, um, intensive Latin is being offered. And a lot of times in the past, we, we've, said to, we've said to parents of eighth graders of, you know, that are becoming freshmen, sometimes they have diffic difficulty with language, modern languages, only because with modern languages, there are so many skills that need to be addressed, uh, among which are the listening and the speaking skills. And some kids have more of like that math mind, that uh, um, they like the translation. Um, they, really, they really have a hard time with like the listening, the speaking. So a lot of times those kids, they fare well in intensive Latin um, or following the Latin track. And in Latin, once again, um, three R, that, there's also three H. So in Latin as well, you can start with the three, three R, three H, and then just continue all the way through. Next slide, please. This is the slide that's very scary. This is the Spanish slide. So um, with Spanish, we have three different paths all starting with either Spanish one or, or Weber, Spanish one or Weber, Spanish one or Weber. So if you just follow across, um, once again, all our students are going to go into level two, but in Spanish, we have the option of choosing, um, we have two different sections of level two since we have a larger enrollment. So basically um, there's two B or there's two A. So two A, we have the students that really are very, you know, they're very, very comfortable with language. They've, they've, they've excelled. Um, they don't really have a problem. Um, so they'll go on to this, this track, this 2A track. They review things very, very quickly. And then of course they, they just continue um, and they actually get, get through a quite a bit more than those that are in 2B. The students that are in 2B, those might be the students that their teachers have recommended uh, that might have difficulty with the language. So they go at a slower pace. So what happens is once your student is in 2A, the subsequent year, level three, one more time, there is the ability to switch over to the honors path or they could just, fit, they could just move along on the regions track. Both of these courses will culminate in the FLAXB exam, 3R and 3H. So after 3R, they would go on to Variedades and the communication so they have the ability to take Spanish for all four years. The honors track, of course, you have advanced, Advanced, um, once they finish with 3H, they have a choice to make uh, um, during 4, 4H. They can either take the language track, which most students do, or the literature track. And then they go on the file the last year would come up, culminate in the AP exam for the path that they have chosen. So here is AP language, um, Spanish language and culture. And this is AP language, Spanish literature and culture. But all of the students have the opportunity to follow along with their language for all four years. And um, the last, the last um, path here on the bottom, that um, requires a qualifying exam. And it's usually given to students who have a lot of knowledge of the language. Um, and they go into what it's called intensive Spanish two and three. The subsequent year, they take AP Spanish language and culture, which culminates of course in the AP language, language exam. Then they go on to advanced Spanish for H literature and then they take the AP Spanish literature, literature exam as, as seniors, okay? But this does require um, a qualifying exam. I know it's a little, um, it's always, I know you normally have a lot of questions, especially when it comes to Spanish. So if I could, I could just probably guess, I know some people in the past have asked me, can a child ch change language? Absolutely. You could change language, but you will have to stick with that language at least for um, through the FLAXB exam, right? So um, it's often not recommended, but it can be done. Uh, and they would go into level one. So the two classes in which, or the two languages in which we offer level one are Italian and Spanish. Um, and once we get to um, 
soft, um, um, I'm sorry, junior and senior year. In the honors track, we also offer, offer courses uh, through St. John's University in which the kids can get up until um, 12 credits if they take six credits in junior year and six credits in um, senior year. So some of them do opt to do that. And I think I am done. If you have any questions, I know it's very confusing. It's here. You can always reach out to me, cferrante at portnet.org. Thank you so much, Dr. Per Pernick, and good luck to everybody. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ferrante. We truly appreciate your time and walking us Thank through. You. It's complex, complicated for sure, but this is the price of, uh, of a vibrant, deep program. Uh, so again, uh, these flowcharts exist on our website. The this, this slideshow will be on our website as well. Um, so thank you again, Mrs. Ferrante. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Um, okay, we have one subject to go. Uh, science. Our science department chairperson is Mr. Phil Crivelli, and unfortunately, he could not be here tonight. So, pinch hitting for Mr. Crivelli is Mr. Weiss. Okay. I'm going ahead. Oh, I like that picture. That was a really nice picture. Um, so, uh, thank you. Um, so, I'll be talking about science tonight. I do also have knowledge in this area as I'm a former science department chair. Um, and so science, all ninth grade students will take biology. Um, some students will take regents biology. Other students will take honors biology. Um, this year, there was not uh, an honors bio, biology qualifying exam. So in lieu of that, or uh, we will be using the academic records from middle school. Those were always part of the equation. And so now um, we will just be readjusting um, that formula to determine um, where students fall. And what we will be doing is making a recommendation. Um, if on their matrix score, um, when we compile all of their academic data, um, that composition comes out to an 85 um, or higher, they'll be invited to join Honors Bio. I do want to clarify that has nothing to do with their average. Um, it is a special formula that we've designed where we know where students have been successful. Um, if they were, if they their matrix score is lower than that number, um, they will have an opportunity to opt in um, if if the parents would like to sign a waiver, um, and then a, a level below that where we really say, look, we really don't recommend it. Um, there's still an opportunity to waive your child in. Um, we would just ask that you actually have a conversation with Mr. Crivelli about that. Um, we do want to make sure that. Um, that students are prepared and know what they're getting into with honors biology. Um, and so once those scores are available, there will actually be a separate meeting for honors biology where we'll talk about whether you wanna opt in, whether you don't wanna opt in, what that means. Um, and so I know there's always a lot of buzz around honors biology because it is the first honors course that freshmen get to take. Um, and so it may or may not be right for your child. And that's what we'll talk about um, as we talk more later in the year, um, uh, specifically about honors biology. Um, next. Okay, so the Regents Bio curriculum is the standard New York State uh, curriculum, but it does go beyond that. Um, and at the end of the year, this course um, culminates in the Living Environment Regents exam. Um, it is a challenging course to be sure. It goes way beyond the living environment regions cu curriculum. Um, it has a lab component to it. And so uh, some of the chairs were talking about classes meeting four out of six days in our cycle. The regions biology and most of our science classes meet five out of six days to accommodate that additional time for lab. Um, next slide. So honors biology. Um, as it says right there, is a very difficult course. Um, a lot of people like to say it's the hardest course at Schreiber. I like to say it is the first hard course at Schreiber. Um, and so it is challenging in a different way. Um, and so students are making a transition from eighth to ninth grade already, which can have its challenges. And so now this is a challenging course on top of that. Um, it goes more in depth to each of the topics in biology. Um, and there are extensive writing requirements that exceed the requirements in the Regents course. Um, it also does include um, 
a research paper, which is not part of the region's course. Okay, next slide. Um, the science department offers a number of AP courses. Generally, students will start to take these courses uh, potentially junior year and then senior year. Um, AP biology, AP chemistry, sometimes those are taken um, in conjunction with AP physics one in the junior year for students who really want to take uh, AP science. Generally, AP physics one is the junior year science course. Um, and then senior year, if they want to continue in physics, they will take AP Physics 2 or AP Physics C, which is physics with calculus. Um, and then students who want to explore the environmental side can take AP Environmental Science as seniors. Um, again, I, AP Biology, AP Chemistry are also offered to seniors as well as the juniors who want to take two science courses. Um, next slide. Um, so students currently in Science 8. Um, generally, um, they will take Regents Biology. However, uh, they can opt into Honors Biology. Um, and again, we've talked a little bit about that process. And when you receive that score uh, from that matrix, uh, we can talk more about Honors Biology. Um, after Regents Biology, the sequence goes to Regents Earth Science. And then in 11th grade, Regents Chemistry or non Regents Chemistry. We also have courses in Marine Science, Forensic Science, or Genetics and Zoology. Um, and then in 12th grade, um, students following that pathway might go from Regents Chemistry to Regents Physics or General Physics, or again, Marine or Forensics, Genetics or Zoology, or an AP course if they qualify. The science requirement, according to New York State, is three years of science. Um, one course must be a biology-based course, and one course must be a physical science course or science chemistry physics. Next slide. Um, there are a lot of choices. Uh, sometimes students will take these um, as electives alongside their um, other science course. Sometimes this will be their science course. Um, it just really depends on what a student wants to do. I've seen students take physics and marine science. I've seen students take uh, chemistry and forensic science. Um, I've seen students who take Marine science as juniors, forensics as seniors. Um, there's a lot of options here. Next slide. Okay. As I mentioned previously, students must take three years of science to graduate, one year of living environment, um, and one year of a um, of a physical science. They must pass one um, regents exam. It says here that they have to pass a regents in living environment, but the requirement generally is that they have to pass one regents exam. Uh, to earn a Regents Diploma in New York State. And if they want to earn that advanced diploma, uh, they must pass a Living Environment Regents and a Physical Science Regents, which would be Earth Science, Chemistry, or Physics. Most students at Triber do take four years of science, and many actually take a fifth year of science, which would mean they're doubling up at some point. Next slide. Okay. Science Research uh, is a competitive program which begins in uh, 10th grade. We have a process which is which will begin in the, in the middle of ninth grade, um, where ten students will be accepted into the program, and this is a three-year commitment where students will work uh, in labs, will um, find internships, and will do real science work in labs right alongside scientists. Uh, they will enter competitions, potentially uh, publish papers, um, and this is for the student that is really, really committed to the science research process. Next slide. And here's the flow chart. Um, we talked about it a little bit uh, about, you know, eighth grade science going to Regents Bio uh, or Honors Bio on the right side of the screen. Um, and the students in Earth Science, again, in ninth grade will go to Honors Bio or Regents Bio. Um, if a student has taken Earth Science and passed the Regents exam in eighth grade, uh, they will not take that course again in high school. Um, if a student does not come in with that earth science credit, they may take that course in high school, depending on the track that they're on. Um, so they may go from bio regents to earth science regents to chemistry regents. However, someone from uh, eighth grade science could go from eighth grade science to biology honors, um, straight to chemistry honors, depending on that, partic that particular student um, and what their interests are. Um, I believe that's the last slide for science, Dr. Perner. 
That is the last slide for science. I'm going right. to stop my uh, my screen share. So we can uh, take care of a few things. First, let me introduce to you Mr. Mark Oppenheimer. Mr. Oppenheimer is uh, one of our uh, assistant principals. He's an interim assistant principal who just joined us this week and he asked uh, to attend to learn more about Schreiber High School. So welcome, Mr. Oppenheimer. Thank you very much. Um, I know that there are lots of questions, so I want to take an opportunity to to, to empty out our, our Q&A box. And again, some of this um, I can, we can answer out loud. Um, so I know there are again, lots of questions about what the future holds for um, in-person schooling. And, and some of that connects to what the district is doing. So the district is of course, um, meeting, uh, the Board of Education has meetings uh, about what the future holds. Uh, Dr. Hines is in contact with um, other superintendents around the county. Um, we are working hard to try and come up with um, plans. This is an ever evolving situation as I'm sure you all know. Um, in fact, tonight parallel to our meeting, our uh, building protocols me uh, committee has been meeting um, to uh, to revisit our protocols, things that we set up over the summer as, as we've learned more uh, generally nationally around the world about the virus and to see if there's anything that we can do to change um, our own protocol. So we continue to make and to evolve, um, but I don't wanna speculate at all about um, what September is going to bring uh, because we just don't know. Um, and I think it would be a little irresponsible of me to speculate, um, and I don't want to do that. Um, so other than that, uh, I'm seeing some other, I'm sorry, I'm seeing some other questions. Mr. Okay. Weiss. I know there was a, yep, I know there was a question about our six day cycle. Oh. Um, and so I don't want to go into too many details. What I do want to say is that it may seem confusing to us as adults and the kids pick it up so quickly that I often am turning to one of the students and saying, what day is it? What period is it? Um, because they live the schedule. And when we look at it from the outside, it seems a little bit artificial. Um, basically, we have a six day cycle with days A through F. And then each day there are six periods. So it's a six by six grid, which means that a student can take um, courses that take up up to 36 periods in a six day cycle. There've been a lot of questions about electives um, and when students can take electives. And a lot of the answers that I've been providing have to do with an individual student schedule. And so of those 36 periods for a freshman, five of them will be science, four of them will be math, unless they're in the six day math, then it would be six. Four of them will be English, four of them will be social studies, four for language, and then two for ninth grade health, two for phys ed, and then four for their art or music. So if they're not taking six day math, we've already filled up 29 of those 36 spots for them, uh, which leaves them uh, seven spots, which is really enough for maybe one four day um, or four period elective. However, many students have six day math. Uh, some students have resource room. Some students have an academic, ser academic intervention service course uh, in English, which is really an extra help course. Um, and so for some students, they um, go beyond that 29 and they will not have room in their schedule um, to take an additional elective. In addition, that um, that's really a good time, those free periods, as the kids call them, that's a good time for the students to go to extra help because their teachers are available. That's a good time for a student to meet with their guidance counselor because their, um, their guidance counselor is available. And so we do not encourage students to fill up their 36 spots. Um, that is a very busy day. Our classes are a full hour. And so that is six full hours of instruction with only a half hour break for lunch. Um, and that makes for a very, very busy uh, child. 
Um, and so we do encourage that as freshmen, that 29 to 33 or 34 for the students who maybe have resource or an AAS class, that's a, that's a lot. Um, and that's enough for most students. Um, I want to, can I jump in, Mr. Weiss? Yes, of course. Um, I, I want to echo first what Mr. Weiss said about um, even us not knowing uh, the letter day. I always keep it on my board. I tweet out the letter day um, every single yep. morning. Um, and so you can follow me on Twitter at Schreiber Prin, uh, if you're interested in, in knowing the letter day cycle. It, your children will figure this out. They will have it down by about period three on day one. Um, maybe it'll take them to period six, but it takes adults a really long time to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. It is confusing, uh, but this is a good process and it's important for kids to gain an understanding that it helps them with their own personal responsibility along the way. And I think it's valuable. We will dive deep into these sorts of issues when we meet again in June. Uh, tonight, again, is a large overview of the programs that we offer. June is time with uh, all of us and Mr. Weiss and myself to talk more deeply about how the six day cycle works, how your child will have a lunch period, uh, how you know we have lunch periods for everybody. Where most high schools allow students uh, to opt out of lunch. Every, every child at Shriver has a lunch period. We'll show you how that works and what those options are. Uh, so we'll go all through that once we're together again in June. There is one uh, question that I haven't answered, uh, haven't typed an answer to, uh, and that is how and when do we learn how many electives can be chosen? Uh, generally speaking for grade nine, Mr. Weiss, you can help me with this. Uh, you just answered it. That's, that's how good you are. Um, thank you for that. Uh, but generally speaking, I, I think it's, it's one elective in grade nine. Um, you know, there are a lot of required courses um, and they also include health in grade nine. Um, so there's not a lot of space for electives. Generally speaking, okay. students have one. Um, and, that, and that depends on a number of other variables as well. Right, it depends, just to add to that, it just depends. Every student schedule at Triber is individualized. And so, some students may be able to take an additional elective as freshmen. Other students will take them as sophomores. Some students will take two or three electives over four years. Other students may take as many as 10. Um, it really just depends on the student and their interest. And again, we encourage students to have a healthy attitude and uh, to, to ba have some balance in their lives and not necessarily fill up every uh, spot in school with a class but to have some time to take care of their other needs during the school day. Great, I wanna thank those of you that just followed me on Twitter. I got a couple of alerts. Uh, you know, we're very possessive of our Twitter followers. What can I tell you? Um, okay, that's a lot of information. We've had a long meeting. As a reminder, again, we'll post this entire meeting on our YouTube page. We'll send out a link uh, through the HSAs for the YouTube our Schreiber High School YouTube channel. Um, and we will also post our slideshow on Mr. Weiss's page on our website. I thank you all for hanging in with us for so long and welcome to Schreiber High School. I'm really confident that this is gonna be an exciting four years uh, for your children and I hope you know, for you as well. So uh, we'll see you really soon. Take care, good night.